The cost of government is driving up the cost of living. A half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits have sent more dollars chasing fewer goods, which always leads to higher prices. Liberals claim they had no choice but to add this debt to fund COVID-19 benefits, yet the Parliamentary Budget Officer has calculated that almost half $205 billion of the $500 billion in new spending measures had nothing to do with COVID. Governments have always borrowed money by selling bonds to lenders. What was different this time is that the Bank of Canada bought these bonds right back at a higher price from the financial institutions that bought them in the first place. This made it easier for the Trudeau government to sell those bonds and raise debt because lenders knew they would be repaid a bigger sum almost immediately by the central bank. So how does the central bank pay for the bonds? The answer to the technicalities behind the fancy world quantitative easing, which literally and figuratively means money printing according to Pear, will be uncovered in the video you are about to see. Quantitative easing is figuratively money printing and it is literally money printing. And let's go through it, because frankly, in downtown Toronto, there have been a lot of people who have contested this point, but I am going to go through it regardless because it is important to understand how we got here and make sure that we never get here again. So what happened was the government was running deficits that they could not borrow from the marketplace because there was not enough lenders on planet Earth that would have lent the half trillion dollars that Trudeau was borrowing. He also wanted to be able to say he was doing it at record low rates, something that wouldn't have happened if the market mechanism would have allowed supply and demand to move the bond yields up as they would, you would normally expect if the government was borrowing that quantity of cash out of the, the economy in such a short period of time. So what happened was that the central bank bought back on the secondary market bonds that the government had only days earlier sold to the market. Now, uh, this is seen as exculpatory among some economists. They are not printing money to give it to the government. They're buying these bonds on the secondary market. That's actually worse. Why? Because what happened is the government would sell the bond on a Monday and the central bank would buy it back on a Wednesday at a higher price, allowing financial institutions, luckily enough, lucky enough to be uh, on the Payments Canada network, to arbitrage the difference between the government selling them something at one price and buying it right back at a higher price. Somebody paid for that arbitrage, and obviously it is the, the seller and the buyer, which is, of course, the Canadian taxpayer. Now, how does the government, how does the central bank pay to buy these bonds? Well, it deposits money in the financial institutions' accounts that are held at the Bank of Canada. And so the deposits that the central bank had for these financial institutions skyrocketed to about $300 billion from almost nothing uh, within a couple of years. And those deposits can be turned into hard paper cash. And that is why. First, the money supply went from $1.8 trillion to $2.3 trillion, half a trillion dollars, which is almost exactly what the deficit was, right? Not a coincidence. And the paper money, the stuff that's printed, went from $90 billion to $124 billion, both increasing by approximately 27% in two years. So yes, they created cash, and yes, they printed money. The same little old ladies who can't afford food and fuel are now forced to pay through their taxes for interest paid to the most powerful banks, insurance companies, and investors. And for what? To fund government overspending. It allowed Trudeau to wave away the danger of supercharged deficit by claiming they could basically borrow for free. Had the government been forced to borrow real money from real lenders, Trudeau would have been forced to borrow less. What happened to all the cash that was pumped into the financial and mortgage systems? We would find out in a new video. For now, drop your comments in the comment section. Also hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications.